Yeah, but I don't see anybody standing in line. But <laughs> Uh, we're going to start our demo today, and normally we do something blacksmithing, and this is not really blacksmithing, but I think this would be called silversmithing, wouldn't it, Steve? Sounds good, uh, sounds good. yeah. We do silversmithing today. Uh, it's a little different from what we normally do, but we like to have some things going on and a diversity of things that we do. And today we've got Ed and Donya Harbin. This is a brother-sister team here, and they're going to be doing coin jewelry. And I promised them I would not explain everything they're going to do uh, before they got to it because I don't have a clue. So uh, I'm going to leave it to them, but at this time, I'm going to turn it over to them. It's good to have them. They just joined us last month and volunteered to do a demo today, so that's great. Uh, so any of you new people or any of you old people, if you want a demo for us, let us know. Uh, that's what we're here for. But it, it's good to have them. We welcome them, and we're going to turn it over to them and let them tell us all about it. Appreciate right. guys. Well, what we're going to do is start off with a coin. And I'm going to use a silver coin. The 1921 Morgan. Silver is a little bit easier to move, but it's also easier to screw it up and make it. Like, it'll, it'll go wonky on you quick. Um, so, we'll start with this one. Need to do that looks like what it's like. Yeah. Everything is different for everybody. I do quarter either. I can't touch silver. Silver is probably the hardest for me to do. I've, I've done copper, wood well, we've done copper, silver. Just regular clad coins. Clad coins. Clad for me is, I mean, I can move it quick. It, it doesn't go wonky on you as, as easy. So that's the big difference. It's now, a lot softer, so it's a lot easier to move for me. And that's where you should start out a quarter is worth a quarter. So you can, mess, you can mess up a lot of quarters or half dollars and you haven't lost anything. Whereas the silver starts adding up quick. Starts adding up. You, you, can still, you can still sell it back in scrap. But Could you talk some about your equipment before you start the actual process? Certainly. Certainly. Um, we've got the ring stretcher and this right here will open up stretch your ring little press punch you have different size punches you start off with depending upon the size of the ring you want to make so if you're trying to make a small ring making your ring today by the way um you want to do a small ring of course you don't need like the half inch punch but if you're going for something like this you really have to take more out because at the end what you're doing is you're using using these that's called a, a swedish wrap and you're extruding it so as you're pushing it through it starts to get smaller and it also straightens the walls up but the walls of the coin actually get thicker so it gets harder to push through um, and it'll work hard and really quick on you as you start to bear down on it. Um, so these are all your different uh, sizing cones. That's, those are the cones you start to use to open it up. It I'm taking the mind that all this is kind of learned here. Like you just don't pick it up in one day. It's one of those things. No. Like with the punches, I mean, a quarter like the highest you want to go is like seven sixteenths, maybe a half. Mm -hmm. Because then your band starts getting thinner. So the smaller the ring, the less it, the less tension you're gonna have. Your density in that metal gets a lot smaller. Which means as soon as you start stretching it or trying to get the ends to fold over, it's gonna tear. And that, that right there is an example of the learning. <laughs> That's a Morgan split it's an expensive message. yeah that, that split and that right there is a walking liberty <coughs> silver half dollar like a 40s and you'll notice when you start to shape it turn the cone over if there's any cracks you see little cracks right there um the little cracks in the edge when you start to put that pressure to it that's where they're tearing 
care. Now, some of the coins, um, the Ben Franklin half dollars, they are notorious for tearing, and you'll see on a coin well, around your relief right here, the better the relief and the thicker the coin, the less likely you are going to have a tear. Um, a lot of them will have low points, like I know the chin right here, uh, quarters have it back around the backside of, of uh, Washington's head, and the Ben Franklin, just the whole coin is very thin. The relief is very high, but the coin is thin, so when you punch it, if you punch it too small and don't punch past where that low point is, half of them will, will tear right there. Can you see uh, over here, please? Can you see your, your example of the... Oh, yeah, the mess-ups? <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so all, all of these tools are made by Jason Works. Um, there's about three or four different people really who, who make these uh, tools. Um, so you want to um, find them on the internet. Um, I know some of them sell on um, eBay and Etsy. Who, who else does? Um, and, does and no, or? no, who else oh, makes the stuff. tools? Um, oh, Lord. Jason Works is the biggest one right now. Uh, there's a couple of other guys, but most of them, he does something, and most other people copy it or try to improve upon it. Um, yes, so, so, so the punch set here, it's a self-centering punch. Um, the, the original ones had inserts you had to use for specific size coins, whereas the self-centering, you can put Plus. anything around in it. Kind of from dime itself, to whatever in. you can get in that cylinder and each cylinder. Yeah, so anytime you stick your coin in there and you're threading it in, it sits on the inside of this. You take your you take your ring that goes around your punch, you stick it in there, and that's where your punch is gonna come through the top. But when you slap when you slap that on there and tighten it down, it pretty much cones that coin in so that coin doesn't move and then you punch you send your punch through the top. It's, it's much and, and there's, there's cruder ways. There's cruder ways to do it. Obviously, to <laughs> drill it, whatever. But it's, but it's uh, critical that you get it centered because if you don't have a centered up hole, you're going to have a wonky ring no matter what you do. And you I've seen people use lathes, clamp it in. That's that's like that's one zern. Mm -hmm. One zern is the amount you need. <laughs> Just how much is that? Well, okay. Depends. Exactly. Uh, so what I've done here is use a Sharpie, make a mark on it. Now with silver, when it anneals, you don't, you don't want to get reticulation on it afterwards, um, which is the surface of the coin uh, gets very rough, almost like uh, snake skin. And so you can't really get a high polish on it. You can't get a good finish on it at that point. And when you, just like forging, trying to forge outside, trying to figure out your, your the color, it's real difficult. The easiest way to do is put a Sharpie mark on it. When you heat it up and anneal it, you you can see it turning red. You wanted to get it a, a dull red. Lighting, everything else can affect that. You can also see... The, the flame coming off of it will change color. Again, it's hard to see that all the time. When the Sharpie disappears, stop heating it. It's, it's the simplest way to do it. Um, we'll save some, some detail and keep that reticulation from happening. Um, so you take your coin, set it here, any sort of little torch.
That's a mad guy. That's a mad guy. He's got to be good. You don't want to get too hot. That's why I asked. There we go. Okay. Don't put it in one spot because then it's just not there. Was that just standard fire brick or is that yeah. paper stone? Standard fire brick. You start to see the mark on it will start to fade. And there it goes. Not look hot, but it definitely <laughs> is. See a big pack of Now nah, we just use lasers. Did you just use water to pencil? Yeah. yeah. You can use a pickling, um, slightly acidic, where it glows that you do that, because if you have a little scratch on your hand, it'll turn into a giant gaping <laughs> hole in your hand. Um, so. I like to use water. The only thing about the, uh, if you use a pickling, it will take the scale off and polish that off. So it's no big deal. So. What's that? It's nice though. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a bigger, it's a bigger quarter for you, or it's a bigger. Put a little wax on it so that it goes through easier. It's a bigger coin, so you don't have a bigger opening. Are you, are you can use the off the table. Yeah, that's what we got you for, Randall. Yeah. Put it on here. Hold it up the Right there. So you're gonna spin it through. You're gonna stick it in there backwards to get that corner separated from the punch. Cause it's on there pretty good. You put it back in the top and just you're pretty much just flipping it over, stick it back in the top, and you're gonna tap the punch through the ball. So with that initial hole, you're not worried about the, the force of hammering it or anything. You don't have to take it gently. It will hurt it. No, it's, it, it'll only go so far. And, and then there's your your plug. Now, some people, you can use this and uh, make a little necklace out of it because you have a little bit of Lady Liberty's face there. And then there's an eagle. So I've seen people put a little chain on it and do it like a, as a key fob, stuff like that. Or collect them, melt it down, silver. That part is about to do is probably one of the most important parts of making right, the ring. This right here is where you try to get rid of any of those imperfections so you don't end up with the tears. Deburring tool. Go around both edges. Little silver snowflakes. Middle. The other side. You kind of you kind of gonna want to bevel that inside a little bit. Get real real down, clean. Get all the burrs off. Because if you don't, when you go to punch it or put one of these, press one of these through one of these cones, it's gonna tear. I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper, a little, little extra on it. Because once again, anything you do to start off with pays off in the end if you do it right. And not blowing out a $20, $25, $40, $60, $80, $100 coin. Some of the guys on uh, some of the forum groups we do have done gold coins. So if it's this size of a gold coin, you're talking $2,500. I've even seen one guy do a platinum coin. Yeah. Um, the good thing is it's still worth 
the weight. I mean, you really aren't, you know, especially if you keep your shavings and everything, you won't lose anything. Because most of these coins, uh, especially like the gold coins, um, we keep all our punches. Everything we punch out of the center. We this keep this one right here is a real this. Morgan. This one right here is a modern bullion coin. So it's it's not a 1921. This one right here is just silver. So when you buy it, you buy it for the price of the. So there so there's differences in the coins, but still you don't want to waste it. What grip sandpaper are you using right now? It's fine. Um, it's possible. It's probably. No, this one isn't that fine. This one's the uh, 220. 220. Um, we ain't wet, son. I was going to say I got some tooth out of this. We ain't wet, son. I'm going to feel it. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> Overdo it. Okay, so from here. This right here is another one of Jason works, and it's 17 degree. That's the degree here. You're gonna make your first fold now. The, the different dies are sized for modern coins, so you have with with that you have to start out with the bigger one if you're starting out with a quarter. Here's the smaller one. Now, lady, the out, or do you want the eagle out? Eagle out, okay, my favorite. Um, so, eagle down. Push over there. Eagle down, lady up. So, so through the whole process, it, to keep the detail on your coin, you need to keep using the burlife, or you can use ivory soap on these. Uh, sometimes they'll spray silicone in, inside these. Past the, the first push through with the cone, then you have to start wrapping uh, your coin with um, Teflon. Teflon Everything tape from or, Teflon tape. Electrical. Or electric tape. Electrical tape looks good. Uh, <coughs> I'll also use the shop towels when I'm doing it. That's what keeps. That's what keeps the the lettering and the you know that's anything that you it. want on there. It keeps it from fading out. Because that right there is very you smooth, and that's you what your it, the corn will end up looking like. It just it's squishing your detail out. Yeah, the detail will be gone. And, that's and, and, that's, and that's where most people start out. Yeah, is, detail just trying to get a, a, a ring that's round and you squish the detail out and you go all off. And then you start paying attention every time you do it to wrapping and being <laughs> They're making sure the table don't tip over. You want to pull on this. So you get it underneath there. You want to make sure that it's kind of centered because when you start to pull down, you don't want that to slide because then it goes oval instead of round. Start slow. You got to you got really, but you got to. I mean, this is a real gentle process because if you don't, it's gonna. One side is going to fold before the other, or it slips out of that cup. And if it slips out of that cup, then you're going to have one side that's kind of teardrop, and the other side is going to be rounded. And then you got to flip that bad boy back over, work that wonk out, flatten it back out. Not all the way flat, but you got to kind of flatten it back out, cup it back out, and then start all the way. Now, it's starting to cone a little bit. You can kind of see it there. So the, so the self centering guys. Are only applicable for the initial punch. For the punch. After that, it's touch. I mean, when you start pulling on it, if it starts going, you feel it. That's the reason if you go slow enough, you can stop before it goes, just folds on you because it will just fold. Usually, 
that's when you get that tear. That's when there's a weak point in the coin. Um, if they're the newer bullion coins, they're less likely to have basically stress points in them because you know, if it's if it's been around and been handled and everything, they wear. Uh, so right now, it's still getting straight. How often do you want to annul? I do it every time. You can't annul too often. Uh, don't over annul because then you end up with reticulation, which is you're cooking out the other metals that are in it, and it also at that point it'll also get more brown. So more likely to have. So, so it's issue work harder work. hardening as you move it. Right. Yeah, right. You, it, right. it's and all work. When hard. you start playing with the the presses, you could you know you'll you know when you're going to roll it. It's it's moving, it's moving. It's it's the, the same thing, you know. It'll lock down working time. a piece of metal on an anvil, you. Not only by color, but by feel, you can. Hey, it's moving, moving, and then eh, not moving anymore. You'll know it when you're pushing it through the, the press and stuff, because it'll go from where it's just easy to push. It feels like you're pushing a piece of styrofoam through there, to where it feels like you're, you're pushing a center block through a little bitty hole. It just won't move for you. I don't care how big you are. It won't move. So that right there, it stretches a hole out a little bit, starts to roll it. What kind of press? What is the name of that press again? This right here is a, it's a ring stretcher. It's, it's, it's a jeweler stretcher. If you go in and your ring isn't fitting anymore, they're going to put it in something like this. And it's got little dies. That you move to show. This part is the stretching part. That's the reducing die. You put it in that and, and it's tapered and it'll... And, and he was just using that as an arbor press. Right. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. It, it presses, it, it has use, a better foot on it. How do you yeah. do that without the only two? <laughs> you start off by punching a hole. Believe, believe it or not, there's plenty of guys that do it. It's, it's, it's real. Over a mandrel. Tapered mandrel. That's how they do it. They stick it on a the mandrel, they, they mill it, they stick it on a the mandrel, they'll take a, a Teflon hammer or something like that and just tap it out on that mandrel. Or you kind of get it rounded and then you flip it over on the other side. And the other side will be a little more beveled than the side that you just tapered. You flip it over and, and just start the process all over again. You have to keep flip flopping it. See, some of us might want to try that at least trying to find easier way. Or another way to another do way. it. Another way. Now, you can also take a coin. You can take this right here. So, Neil, take it here and just slowly roll it, tap it, roll it, tap it, roll it, tap it. And you're going to flare it out and then. People drill out the middle, file it. At that point, you have you have a silver ring, but you ain't got anything with a face on it. Because you've knocked out all the details. Uh, yeah, um, that's that's the with doing it this way. You have to use to keep any of the detail. You have to use something like this. But with a silver coin, you're going to lose that so fine detail. You know, on this one right here, you'll be able to see In God We Trust, United States of America, everything on it. And depending upon how well the detail was when you started, you can keep 95, 100% of it if you're really careful, take your time, and kneel it. Yeah, do it like it's really, really, this, really. This right here awesome from start to beginning, you can have it in, you can have it ringed. Anywhere from depending upon how well the coin works with you, um, 20 minutes to 40 minutes. Doing it like that, it's an afternoon. Um, but so right now, I'm still trying to make sure that there aren't any burrs, any tears. <coughs> because you, you pushed out, you've got a sharp edge right here. And so you can just look for any tears because if you find them, that's when you need to sand them out. Yeah, by sanding it and using the, the deburring tool, you can keep it from splitting or fracturing more than it already has. I mean, you can keep it from splitting at all. And at any point, you see it going wonky, 
stop and get the wonky out before you keep flattening it out. Flattening and stretching. Yeah, if it ever gets wonky, you're just going to keep it. It's going to keep getting worse and worse. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a cutting wax. Any, anything that while you're, you're, you're pushing down on it, you can control the amount of pressure you have to put on it without just, you know, bearing, because once you start bearing down on it, if it goes, it goes. Um, so I've gone up to a larger cone. If it, you want it just to fit through there. Didn't go wonky, but it ain't perfectly round at this point. And too much pressure, I am going to re it. it. His arm started shaking. So. Well, I didn't want to flip the table over. Okay, now to get this. Make another mark on it. Why is doing that? I'll show you all something. If it gets wonky like this, and you've got one of these bricks right here, the easiest way is like if it's a nail sticking up under there, it's got that footing on there. The way we would do it, just re anneal it and then just flatten it back out, just push it back out, and it'll flatten back. It won't flatten all the way back out, but it'll go back to its normal tone shape that you started out with. And then you pretty much just start back over it. Like said, if Tanya said, if it ever gets wonky, it's just, it's nonstop. It'll just keep getting worse and worse and worse, and you'll never be able to get it right. Also, the, the Delrin balls or the, or the steel balls, you can use these to straighten out the wonky. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of flavor. I live by them and don't like them. Ed likes getting up. He likes getting these stuck in there. Yeah. I like getting the, the Delron ball stuck in there. Yeah. There's there. Yeah, there. Now I've done is you're sticking it on that ring stretcher pretty much backwards if you were going to stretch it. He's stretching it in reverse where he's trying to push that bevel out a little bit more. One thing it will do when you do that is it'll spread it out as far as you want so you can go all the way up to like a size 16. But then you got to walk it back in. So you would use one of these little Swedish cup, Swedish, what is it, die cup, whatever, and, and flatten it back down to your size. You always want to go like a size of two above whatever size you're trying to make. So if you're making a size 13, go up to a size 15. And then you, because when you use one of those sweetest styles, it's going to smash it back down to a size like 13, 12 and a half, somewhere around there. And it may take you some time to get, you know, figured out uh, or to get out to what size you want. So you might have to work it a little bit. Yeah. How does that differ? I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. As, as you're stretching it, you want to keep. Uh, Rotating it around so they're not stretching in the same place. So when you're when you're making the coin a, a larger size to walk it back down to the, the desired size, is that based off of like certain coins walk down back uh, a size and a half, all of or all of them are kind of? It's standard. pretty much all of them, unless you're doing like quarters. Mm -hmm. You're gonna punch a seven sixteen hole. I've I've done a half inch, I think, but it's really thin by yeah. If you do a seven sixteen, like. There comes a there comes a point where you've done enough rings, you know what size hole that you're gonna put to what size ring you're gonna get. It's it's like like I said, it's one of those things that's trial and error. You'll just kind of have to figure it out as you go. Like a seven sixteenths, you can get probably the biggest manual gets with a quarter. A seven sixteenths probably is six and a half or seven. 
if you do a half inch, you can get up to an eighth, but it's really, you gotta be really careful because that band is really thin. So as you're walking it out to that size, it'll tear quick. So you gotta be really gentle with everything, you know, all your movements. What's the purpose of making it larger and then walking it back down? Well, you have, I mean, you have to because you're walking those walls in. The biggest thing is because, you know, right now, it's shaped weird. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's actually like this. It's not straight. It's like this. And so you have to keep stretching it beyond where you want it to get the walls to straighten out and not have a, a slanted ring or a curve, especially if you want to go flat wall, which is straight across. Would you do the same thing if you, if you stretch it on a ring mantle? Well, the only thing that you're going to be able to stretch on a ring mantle is about a quarter, anything smaller than a quarter. And that's that's straightening up, you know, somewhat flat. You would use this and this, and I'll show you all that here in a little bit. But if you're using, like he is, a bigger, you know, half dollar or uh, something like that, then you're going to have to stretch it out and then work it back down. That quarter with a quarter inside. <laughs> you might have heard well, actually, that's one of the uh, um, presidential dollars. That's kind of bronze-colored one. But that's that's a that's thin. That was that was his doing. Uh, that was a lot of that's that was that was hours on that one. What I did was what I did was I stretched one out to like a size eight or something like that, and then one to like a seven. I popped one inside of the other one. And I slid both of them down on this and just stretched it out until it was. So that that was enough right there to work you hard. Bounce thing off again, you just so you feel it through here. Uh, you inside and outside. Don't want to put too much pressure on stuff. Yeah. 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 So that, that one is just pressure held together. There's no force welding or anything else. Pressure. What I did was I just took I took one quarter and made it about a size and a half bigger than the other quarter, and then I split that quarter. I thought I actually one's a quarter, and one's a half. Uh, was a half dollar? Was it the gold half dollar or whatever it was? Yeah. And then I took, which the outside band would be the, the gold half dollar. And then I took it. And I stretched it out so I can eight. If I have, it's been a while since I've done it, but I think I stretched it out so. A 10, 8, something like that. And then I took the other quarter and stretched it out to a size and a half smaller. And then when I stuck it, I stuck both of them on there and then just stretched it out to where they were pressure fitted together pretty much. I'm good with the smaller coins. I can't do the, he's, he's good with the big coins. I can do the coppers, but the silvers he's good with. I'm just good with the clad, the clad and the gold. See the off center there? And so that, that's part of why you stretch it beyond bigger than the size you want to get this part straightened out and then bring it back down. Right now I'm trying so to fold it over it. enough. Kept working, working. So that the lip, lip right there will go inside. Now, as you're stretching this, it actually kind of brings that other part in. Um, if I can't get it to, and sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. That's when you will press it in this way. Fold that, yeah. Fold it back in. No, that's that's a um, ten dollar uh, Cuban silver peso. So it's it's an ounce and a quarter. So, so obviously you're you're not limited to U.S. coins. There's all kind of really great foreign coins. You gotta be careful though, because some of the coins we found out will tear your punches up. I sit in there and hammered a steel coin for good oh, and wax and. Look out for fake Morgans. They uh, don't. I wouldn't buy Morgans on um, Amazon or even eBay because a lot of them come out of China that have a steel core in it. You just you're, not, you're not getting through it. Speaking of that punch, there were a couple of people that missed the very beginning. Could you hold up that self-centering punch? Yeah. Can you use opportunity? 
Yeah. This right here, self-centering punch. And what it is is this cone right here. Oh yeah, we're screwing it down. It presses it down on this table right here, and actually centers it and holds it still, so it doesn't wobble. So you, you don't have to try to make a mark. You know, do measurements. He said really Joe Rose Forge just said he snapped a China number one the other day. Oh, Two dollar Morgan should have known. Yeah, yeah. And one of the easiest ways to tell it, um, take one of those, take one of those fake Morgans like that, drop it on some metal, silver, solid silver, even down to like uh, probably sixty percent. They sound different. The steel core ones sound like a like you're dropping a piece of steel down on metal. You know, it's, it doesn't sound the same. So that, that's that's the easiest test because usually the weight's right, um, and you can always you can almost always tell unless it's worn so that it looks that way. You can tell on the lettering. The lettering is never crisp, never right, and a lot of it's crooked. But if Ooh, wow, Morgan's for $10. Yeah, I'll take them. You're getting like $2 yeah, so, worth of so, silver. So, so that's like a $2 copper ingot that turns into that. They're, they're, they're really heavy. That's the thing. The, the big coins don't make good rings for women because they're so now I'm turning it upside down to bring that the reeded edge, which is the outside edge of the coin, down some now. It's a lot harder to do because it's always the thickest part of your coin. Coins for the longest time, I think sometime early 1900s, uh, 1910, something like that, almost all coins are actually made. There's a rim on it. You set it down, it's not sitting on the relief. They wear out too quick. They're having to replace coins too often because you couldn't tell what it was. So now that reeded edge is always thicker. That right there, that right there is sized for me at a 10 and a half. If you look through that size, it's still cone. And that's because that reeded edge is always going to be thicker. You can machine it down, but then you lose. I mean, that's. That's how you can tell us a coin. Uh, yeah, this this part of it's going to be harder because it's so much. Stand over there. <laughs> I might have put it over here just now. Yeah, I might have put it over here. It just ain't wanting to move. We got one of the holes, but we wanted something. Yeah, we did. So, when you're picking coins to ring, um, it's nice to have good detail on the outside here. You're not, you're not keeping what's on in the middle. You see things, a lot of foreign coins that have koala bears and butterflies. That's not going to be on your ring. You want to look for something on the outside of I didn't stretch it much, but the more you work it, the more you're going to have to re it. it. As it goes on, it, it work hardens quicker, the silver does. Yeah, 
One of the shaping cones again to try to. I want to press it so that it's all the way shaped to the edge of the cone. And it should bring it in enough to go in the Swedish die. Finally, in the edge, it's actually down to the right size. So, from here on out, hopefully. So you didn't wrap it uh, with Teflon before you? That, that right there, I'm, I'm just trying to press this edge in. Okay, so I'm not on the face right now. Yeah. Now, this, this right here, you can use slug pushers. Okay. Push it down so you don't want it to go in and chew. Um, yeah, start off with that one right there. Um, re anneal it. Turn the beard, anyways. I figured it might have some smoke down in there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, I will for a long time. This beard used to be about that long. I call it a piece of slag and it just. Well, now I'm going to start with plumber tape. I'm going to protect all of that detail. You get it down there and over so, that reeded edge. About how many reps are you doing? Yeah. Just just a good amount. Um, this stuff is cheap. Yeah. That's what we're showing. You want to put it on a really, really, really thick. That's what keeps that's what keeps all the lettering and you know everything in. It's almost it's almost so thick that the dye that you started out with it won't fit in there anymore. Okay, so it's tedious. How big you want? Don't worry, like that it's like a big thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Always you can you can turn these into bracelets. You use a muffler mandrel, put it on here, and you can turn them into bangles. Of course, the detail starts to. Whoever used you know um, silly putty on newspaper, copy it and then stretch it. So all your detail starts to kind of look that way. I like to take a piece, piece of shop towel because it just helps keep your pusher centered. Again, go slow because it can still going to slip on you, especially early on. I'll probably have to kneel it at least two more times. And right now, it's really just bringing in that reeded edge right there because it's so it's it's so much wider, and it's still cutting. Um, but I'm going to reanneal it. Again, you can't really reanneal it too often. Uh, you can not do it enough, and it'll it'll tear. Uh,
now that I've got it a little bit further down in the die, I'm going to put a good bit more of the farmer's tape on because you're going to start getting contact with the detail. Yeah, like I said, uh, ivory soap, the wax. You can you can use uh, you know silicon spray. That just gets real messy. But it works really well if you have if you have a coin that you really um, like a barber, the barber half dollars. Uh, that's what a lot of people think of when you think of finding um, late 1800s pirate stuff. It's usually barbers that they find on the on the beach. Uh, if they most probably 75 percent of the barbers you find that you can buy have been in the ground. They've been in the ground. They started to leach out you know, the, the, the metal in it. They get brittle. They're worn because these are coins. Most of those coins are made before they actually have the rim on the out edge. So finding a barber with anything on it, so you want to really keep it, keep the detail there. So the silicon spray helps. Less force, you're going to do less damage to it. Uh, but it is messy. <clears throat> So, so where he's making a really uh, big ring right now, you can also, with these Swedish dies or extrusion dies, see, see that really small hole? You can you can push a coin through that hole and make a bead. And it's it, it's my it's to me turning a a dime into a bead. It ends up getting really thick from a dime. It's harder to do than this because you're really forcing it down, a nickel or a dime. Uh, yeah, so, so, so if you look online, uh, besides just your regular rings, um, you can make bracelets, you can make the beads, um, people make um, coin bills, or you use a dapping block to make the dome part, and then you you use these tools to make the bottom flare part and solder them together. So right here, you notice it's it's a lot less cone, starting to get really straight. But you can also see how that's filled in. You start to read, so that's where it's protecting it. And it, it basically solidifies that tape. Uh, Now, it looks to me like, Ed, that after every press, you're feeling all those edges to make sure there's not a piece. Yeah, because right, right now, it would really suck if it tore. <laughs> 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 early, early on, you go, know, well, it happens. At this point, you're like, so close. All that work, all that work. Um, I may also... It's only a live demo being broadcast across the internet. Yeah, no pressure. People all around the world, so hang on your every breath. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and re it because it has really gotten hard real quick. And what it, what's happening is, is it's getting thicker at the thinner edge now because you're it's an extrude hun you're taking something this big and pushing it through something that big so something it's going somewhere and what it does is it thickens up and as it thickens up it can just get it gets dense and hard really really quick What we 
See, and that you can see there, had it's almost turned white. That's the scale. That if you're using pickling and you come out, it looks like it's um, brushed instead of that white scale. Would vinegar work for that? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the a lot of people put vinegar with a little bit of like salt in it. Uh, the vinegar would kick back on it. it. I mean, it's like an explosion in there when he's it in there. She, she put it in a jar with a lid on it. And we would stick it in there and close the lid. A little, I mean, it's quite boiling water. Yeah, what he's saying is it's all over the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so wouldn't, wouldn't you want that scale on there to help kind of protect that detail, kind of like uh, built-in Teflon tape? Or uh, that that you know, with the pressure that, that you do it'll, it'll release. I mean, it's like it, it's almost like rust once it releases. I mean, it's. It's rubbing a little bit of the price at that it's point. So you kind of want to clean it off as much as you can. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, if you've got that scale on there, what would it be like if you're forging a blade or something like that? Oh, yeah. You've got scale you can, on your face, your animal. You you're going to put impressions in your metal. It's a little exactly. bit of the price. Same thing will happen. Exactly. And if, if you want it darkened in the end instead of a high polish, then you use liver or sulfur and blacken it, and then you bust out your details. I think uh, that's what you want. When you're doing a uh, a demonstration, forging demonstration, using the clay. This is more like clay than it is. This is what that liver, uh, that liver sulfur does. And so, yeah, anything, kinda, you can leave impressions on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of, you know, it gets the black, shows the detail a lot more. You just take a buffing pad or something and buff it out, like a fingernail file, uh, one of those little blocks, buff it out. And it take pretty much leaves. All the lettering, all the detail in it, but it leaves the black up under up under everything. And now, not a straight wall, but you're getting close. Now you could you continue pressing it. You can also at this point start using the balls. Get get your shape. Some people actually like a little bit of a almost a, a concave shape here, so that it does this. You can. What's called fat tiring, where that's where you you take these two edges in, like a comfort band. Um, but at that point, what you're doing is something, especially your point edge. Always kind of think about your point edge because that thing right there at this point is very hard to move at all. I don't care how soft it is, it's just so much thicker. Um, and so the amount of force you start using on it. That's when it starts to go wonky if it's going to. And again, maybe that's where the fact that you want to do that. So I'm going to demonstrate We're going to get this press through here. This time. And I'm going to use even more tape because everything will be touching by the time that it drops right. But as big as I've got it now, by the time it pops out, it's going to come out 10 and a half, 11. Now with that um, arbor press that you have, just general arbor press, like any other arbor press, or is there... No, this certain one's, this one's the um, arbor freight one. Hashtag not sponsored. Yes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, with enough control, you could use something like that. Um, we've got the bigger one. Uh, what is it? Three times. Three times. Three times. Okay. But you're not trying to get any kind of special press. Is it just a, a standard one time marble press? This you can do. The, the bigger one is a little bit easier. Just me over here bearing down on it. Um, had a table weight, something like that, and I wouldn't have to really bear down on it so much because I'm not. Right. So, again, there's a lot of that tape on there this time because I don't want to lose any of the detail. Okay. Okay. Get it back in here. Get it good and centered. Yeah, a little more shop towel. I find that with the dyes, 
There's that push rod right there. Keep using shop. Now keeps it centered, kind of like a patch for a black powder rifle. It kind of helps center it, a little bit more control over it. Going down one more size. Drop through. Again, if you look here, oh, that's huge. No, that's not. That's that's right at maybe a ten and a quarter, ten and a half, which would which would be great for me. However, yeah. So. Yeah, you know, and that's you're not you're not necessarily sizing to where it's wearing. You're sizing to get it to where it's wearing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna re it now because that was a that was a big push. If you're trying to check, you're trying to check. Stretch out the braided size. Size almost thirteen. Okay, so but it's it's this lip is the tight part. So when you start getting closer to your size, is again your coin the cut side right here. That's that's a lot bigger. This, if you want to. Feel, feel how much thicker it is right there, and it's almost it's got a sharp edge on it. Not going to be comfortable anyway. Deburring tool, and you can take out a few sizes just by getting that that actual. There's an inner lip in there where that wider coin edge to keep again. They make them that way to keep the faces from wearing out as quickly as you're pressing it down. It it mushrooms out. See, it's really wide. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so the uh, he's saying that the thick reeded side has has the little line impressions. Yeah, um, yeah. Somebody, not Jason, works has a, a die that's a, a re reading die, and you can actually press a reed edge into the cut side of your ring or straighten out a, a messed up uh, reed. That, that's if, if you're buying good coins to ring that's besides the relief on the face of the coin that's also something to pay attention to is that you have a good read to start with because you'll you'll see the imperfections when you fold it out Basic files have a little bit of a weird edge right here. Once you start going really big, uh, anything over about a 12 or 13, it's hard to keep it really straight walled. Um, and that has to do with the thickness, the difference in thicknesses there. But if you get it good and uniform, still wears nice. To me, these actually wear a little bit better because it's not, you don't have an edge. Digging, you know, when you grab something, it's not going to dig into the ground. Closer. All right. So, at this point, jewelers with silver cloth. <laughs> so, I'm going to start off with. This also kind of helps you feel any uh, bad edges on it here. There's one. Best polisher is, but what kind of He can do all kinds of stuff though, man. He can, there's guys that are taking and wait Don your ball uh you can powder coat them. I mean, there's guys that powder coat this point. Really fine, fine detail. You can do the lubber sulfur. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it's a it smells like a bad fart. Yeah, we, it's uh, horrible. We had it. We had it in a crock pot in the basement. Black magic. And as soon as you turn, yeah, you get, black magic. Black it, magic get it. Up, yeah. it doesn't stink. Uh, it's worth the it's worth the cost just to get past that sulfur smell. It's so bad. The sulfur smells so bad. And then, uh, yeah, and that, now they also make a black magic for I think copper and brass. This 
yeah, works better for it. Yeah. So there's different ones, um, and they work great. They don't stink. They work better, uh, you know, like if you want to do heat up whatever item you, you're trying to patina and heat it up, drop it in, take it out, and you drop it in and bring it out, and it's uniform, a, a uniform color, whereas with liver salt, you get this kind of variation. Uh, now, at that point, uh, something like Renwax, put it on it because it's going to wear. Now, if you powder coat it, once you patina it and get it the way you want it, powder it, it will wear perfectly forever. So, so some, the, the powder coating can be on the outside and colors, and so they powder coat it and then bring the relief back out on the outside. People also use the clear powder coating on the inside of clad coins to keep from turning their fingers that some some of the coin people will tell you oh just paint it with clear fair nail polish wears in a yeah, that's, few days that's gonna last a week, a, a week yeah. and then it's going to start flaking off and making a mess the acid the acid in your skin turns turns your, it just depends on the person green like, finger his wife you can make her clad coin and stick it on her finger 30 minutes later her, her finger is black me i've got plenty of Clad coins and my skin never turns black, but I mean, it's just uh, how much you know acid your body puts up. Again, at this point, just depends upon how polished you want to get it, but that's I just mainly with just my, my finger and some flips, and it's oh, and, and the, the polish, copper coins uh, look really pretty in the borax. Mm -hmm. Turn them pink. Oh, And that right there is a Oregon silver dollar ring. Real simple, real easy. Um, but there you go. Now, anybody have any other questions? And then afterwards, we're going to, if it's somebody wants to do quarters or anything like that, you can come over and give it a try. Anyone? We're running three quarters quick. Anyone? Come on, I know somebody wants to make a Anyone want to try? Oh, I've got my <laughs> I think she called first and so then she <laughs> walked in the door. So I don't know that ran Thank you.